Gibson van der Leyen from Austria writes to me, Paul, I was doing some experiments and I came to a conclusion that I would like to know your opinion about. Buying and or listening to music at 44.1 kilohertz, 24-bit, is completely useless and a waste of money. <laughs> Woo, okay. Well, in Cobuzz and HD tracks, the price differences between 44.1 kilohertz, 24-bit, and CD quality, which I will remind you is 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bits, are absurd. They're 25 to 50 percent more expensive. Wow. Or did I do something wrong? Is my theoretical starting point wrong? Do I not have the necessary equipment to give me the data I want to know? And I will say, forgive me, because the author of this wrote a really long note of which I, I just I don't read that many long notes on here. But the, the point of the, his note was that he had done some difference testing and didn't find any difference, didn't hear any difference. So first off, oh, speaking of first offs, I did want to show you something. As you know, I come in on Saturdays when nobody's here. And this is Chris Brunhaver, our speaker designer thing. Look, oh my god, look at this beast. Isn't this wicked cool? Oh god. This. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is eventually going to be uh, a PS Audio subwoofer. I mean, he's been working on this kind of quietly. I, I wish you could see even closer the size of the, the I think it's got a four inch voice coil, a huge magnet. This is just a beautiful beast, but <laughs> Jesus, sorry. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's cool. So where were we? Oh, 24 bit, okay. Well. I don't know anything about Cobuzz and Tidal in that I, when I listen to Cobuzz or Tidal, I don't pay any attention to the high-res versions because my listening to both of those is more just pleasure listening, showing the system off. If I want to listen to high-resolution music, I'll turn to an octave records uh, recording. I will uh, use the SACD and I'll listen to DSD. and. Uh, at times, we'll even go, because at Octave, we sell all kinds of, you know, DSD-256, we sell 176, 192, all those higher-res versions. And yes, those are dramatically better. And one of the reasons that I kind of stick to that is perhaps going to answer part of your question. First off, if we Go back to the beginning. So you got 44.1, 16 bits, all right? And remembering that those 16 bits are the dynamic range of how loud and how soft and what resolution we have in between. If you all of a sudden find 44.1, 24-bit, first thing I would be is suspicious. Where did they get that? Because if it's just a CD, it was never recorded at 24 bits unless they have the master tapes. And let's say that they have the master tapes. Well, in my experience, that difference between 16-bit and 24-bit, for most applications, you couldn't hear any difference. And the reason is that rarely do recording studios, mastering studios, use all the available dynamic range. With 16 bits, you get 90, 6 dB of dynamic range, that's a lot. Now, 24 bits, we can get like 120 dB. Do we use it? Well, think about this. From the loudest note down to where you can hear the lowest note is not that far. That's 70, 70 dB, maybe. And so as a mastering and recording engineer myself at, at Octave Studios, I know that if we drop two low below the noise, uh, approaching the noise floor, somebody listening to a stereo system is unlikely to even hear it. I mean, we at Octave Records use as much dynamic range as we can. And I get criticized for that 
because people, why isn't it loud? Why do I have to crank up the stereo in order to hear this? And when I do on some octave recordings, I crank it up, man, it's amazing. And then every once in a while, a drum whack will come in. And it's like, whoa, it's just super dynamic. And I'm saying, yes, that's it. That's what we're looking for. That's what we want. If you were sitting there and the drummer was playing or the person was singing and playing and, and a drum whack, that's what you'd hear. Now, most companies that aren't octave records compress all of that, right? And they do that because you don't, they don't want you to have to be shocked or anything. I want you to be shocked. <laughs> Absolutely want you to be shocked. So, and here I am ranting off about dynamic range in records. The truth is 90 something dB properly used is more than enough for any recording I can think of. And so getting eight bits more, it's not gonna buy you anything. Where the differences do come in, sample rate differences. And sample rate differences, not if it's upsampled from something original. Like when we make a recording at Octave, we do everything at uh, DSD 256, or we start to play around with 128. But I mean, you're looking at a sample rate of 5.6 megahertz for 128 and uh, 11 megahertz for uh, DSD 256. If we, when we mix it, we're down at um, PCM 352.8, 352,000 cycles per second. That's a lot of bandwidth. And we're only concerned with the zero to say 60K to keep everything phase aligned, right? That's easy when you're at 352 kilohertz, but it becomes increasingly harder as you go down. So we have always said in our electronics, in our recordings, you need 40, 60K flat in order to make sure that everything within the human range of hearing, which goes up to a maybe 20K, there's no phase differences, there's nothing compromised. In order to do that, you need to be some magnitudes above 20 kilohertz. Got it? Okay. In order to do that, the sample rate has to be quite a bit higher. 96 kilohertz, absolute minimum. And I like higher. So higher sample rates, absolutely worth it if they were originally recorded, not just upsampled to that. Dynamic range, 24, eh, not so much. Hope that helps. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>